guys around the house. In this video, I'm going to be giving you an introduction to my loft conversion. In this particular video, I'm going to be showing you how I'm going to break into the roof to give me access from the scaffolding, and I'm going to be clearing out the loft of all the insulation and all the rubbish, so I've got a nice clean working area to begin the project. This is the first in a series of loft conversion videos I'd like to show you, where I'll be trying to cover all aspects of the project as individual videos. The first bit of the project is pretty crude. I've just got to take some of the slates off and the roof felt and try and gain access through two of the rafters. So let's get on with it. so carefully with the Slater's Ripper is this in my own house I want some nice clean access which I can cover over with felt at the end of each day. I'm not employing a loft conversion company so I'm not going to do this in two weeks make a mess and get back out of here. This is probably going to take me a few months so I need to be a bit careful that I'm not going to damage the rest of the roof because I need this to be watertight because I'm living down below. Now I've taken the slates off to the width of two rafters. I've got one rafter there and one there so I'm just going to cut through the battens now and remove those and then cut through the felt and I should get access inside my loft. Lights up ahead, I swear and they're after me Change lane, change lane, to change lane broken into the loft, I've got some access, it's not great, but it's enough to do what I need to do. Now we're going to rip out all this insulation, I'm going to bag it up, chuck it on the lawn for now. Sounds on the radio all sound the same to me. Alright, so what I'd like to do here is show you my view when I'm walking it in and out of this attic. Now I'm not sure how clear that space is for you, but if you look around, you can see I'm just rolling up all the insulation there and I'm trying to get it back down to this, which is a lath and plaster, okay? Now, downstairs, I've actually underboarded in the past, so there's plasterboard under this, so that's not a problem. Obviously the things to bear in mind is when I'm gonna put in my new joists, I'm gonna put them next to the existing joists, they're gonna be a lot deeper, but I've gotta get them down flush and they're gonna rest on a structural load bearing wall which runs pretty much along the middle of the attic and then along the two wall plates at either side of the house. As you saw earlier I was removing the really thick insulation and presumably in the past somebody had had some sort of government grant scheme which was the really thick stuff you saw me taking out. Now uh, unfortunately there's no way I can really keep hold of that as much as I'd like to reuse it it's just getting in the way. I just got to get this clear, get it out and then we can start to get on with fitting the joists. So just for reference, we'll go around the attic. You can see I've got the purlins there. Strange setup on the purlins. They've only got one support, one there in the middle, and one there in the middle. And you can see that between me and next door, there's actually a gap either side of the chimney breast. So I'm gonna have to brick that up. Once I've got my strong joists in place, I'm going to then support the purlins onto the joists, which will then be supported by the three load bearing walls, the outside wall, the middle wall, and the other outside wall. And we'll do the same with that purlin. And then I've got a purlin just above my head, you can see here, that goes all the way along. And it's what we're gonna do is chop that purlin out, and this is gonna be a side dormer sticking out the side of the house. And we're gonna create another dormer on the back of the house, but that's gonna drop down in line with the purlin, so we're not removing that one, so we keep it nice and stable. So you can see now I'm inside the loft with the chimney breast behind me, and we're now facing out where I was just stood. And you can get a slightly clearer picture there of the purlin that basically runs right round the side, round there, and then back up here. Right, so you can see it's the end of the day. I didn't show me putting the roof back together. I've just botched it up for now. A few slates, bit of felt tacked underneath, keep it dry until I break back into it tomorrow. So it's day two, the weather's a bit more grim today, a little bit cooler, but it's not raining at the moment, so that's good. So we're gonna take off the temporary slates I put in place, give me access back to the loft, and we're gonna finish off removing all the insulation. to get your mask on it's horrible in here so all I'm doing is just rolling this insulation up and keeping all the crap inside it
better view now with some of the insulation up. There's the hatch where we came in. If I spin around, and this is round towards the back garden, we can see you've got your purlins go all the way along there. When we put the new joists in, we're going to put some nice supports down underneath the purlin onto the strength and joist, and that will help support the new roof. If we go around to the other side, you can see again the other purlin coming around there. And it's what I'm going to do is take the dormer out in line with these purlins, there and there, and then we'll have a nice ridge height dormer off the side of the house. And round the back here, we're going to break in. I haven't decided how wide to go with the dormer yet, but we'll be going out somewhere in front of me there so that we get a sort of larger area with floor space with a ridge height roof. Obviously, we're going to have pitched roofs coming down, keeping character with the property. Um, unfortunately, that gives you a bit less height than a flat roof, but I think it looks nicer personally, so I'm willing to sacrifice a bit of height just to make the thing look a bit more appealing from the outside. Another thing you can see with an old house is that the purlin isn't bang on straight, the joists are slightly wonky, you can see that the floor height over there isn't bang on, so there's going to be a lot of work to get this one right. But I think put in a bit of time and effort and it'll uh, be worth it in the end. And by doing the loft conversion myself, I'm going to utilise every single bit of space possible, whether it be a, a sliding door cupboard or whether I have a little cupboard for the hoover in the corner, whatever. I'm going to try and make the most of everything. I'm also still considering whether to try and fit in a toilet and a sink, but I'm going to measure that up when I get the dormer in and see if it's worthwhile or whether I'm better off giving the space to the bedroom. So it's the end of day two. I've removed any insulation that was in there. I've removed any crap that was between the joists and I've removed any old cable that was also between the joists. You can see I've just done a temporary fix back over the roof again so we can leave it in case it rains. So it's day three of the project. I've got to take the slates back off the roof again. Weather's not looking so good, but I'm going to chance it anyway. the weather's not looking so good today I'm gonna to leave this top slate on the access isn't as good but I'm not gonna be in and out so often today that way if I get a downpour it's gonna be a lot easier to close this back up apologies for the poor lighting obviously I've just got one light in this attic and it's very dark so the task today is trying to remove the old black lime mortar now when I renovated the house I underboarded with plasterboard so on top we've still got the wooden lath and we've still got the lime mortar now unfortunately where the old black mortar is pushed up through the lath it's obviously sticking proud, and if you were to get the new joists and just bop them on top and bang them down into place, you can knock the old plasterboard down and potentially crack the whole ceiling. So this may seem a bit long-winded, but it's essential for the way I'm going to do it. Now it's a very crude method, but I'm just going to use this little shovel, I'm going to work my way across the floor, and I'm just going to scrape it up, put it into a bucket, and try and get it as flat as possible. Now if you're using a method using steel beams, one at each end of the loft, you could hang your floor joists off the steel beams and raise them above the existing ceiling below. This way it wouldn't make contact with the ceiling and you'd have no problem at all. You could leave all the lime mortar in place. But for one, steel beams are expensive, two, you need a bit more headroom to use them, and three, they would take up room down by the eaves which I want to use for loft space. So whilst this method seems like a lot of messing around, it is possible for me to use these wooden joists. I can bring it in at quite a cheap price, it's something I can do myself without using cranes or ten men to push the beams into place. It'll be robust with lots of bespoke storage space and with the limited headroom I got I'm able to bring it in and meet the building regulations. Yes it's probably going to take me a long time but to be honest when it's done it'll be a lovely space and it'll be well worth doing. As you can see all I'm doing is just scraping this up and putting it into little piles which I'm going to remove later. I just want to get on with the bulk of the job for now. We're in the dark again just with a small light on but you can see what I was hoping to achieve I've now got all the insulation out I've got all the black mortar out there's still traces of it there and I'm gonna have to give it a, a hoover before I put the joists in 
but we now got clear access to the joists down there to the bottom of the rafters so I can take some accurate measurements I can work out exactly how I'm going to sit the joists onto my wall plates and uh, go from there as I said before in time I'll be uploading a series of videos of my loft conversion so the next stage which I'll upload will be me trying to measure, cut in and fit in the joists so if you're interested in that come back to watch that one so that's the end of day three time to cover the roof back over again we've got a light shower now I'm going to go back in another meal, cup of tea, walk a dog job done for more DIY, how-to, household tips and product review, please watch my other videos and don't forget to subscribe. I've been Pouse Around the House. Ta-ta, farewell.